Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Madison Oak. I'm a vestibular physical therapist and I am here to help you with all things dizziness and vertigo. In today's video, it is going to be a little bit longer, so please bear with me. We're going to go through the top three reasons people are dizzy. And hint ahead of time, the answer is not anxiety. The answer to why are you dizzy and your doctor is like, I don't know, it's probably anxiety is wrong. So let's talk about what it actually might be and how it happens and kind of the mechanisms. So hopefully by now you have watched our video on the anatomy and physiology of the vestibular system and what happens, how it works, all that good stuff. If you haven't, uh, I've linked it right here and you can uh, go click that and you can watch it uh, before and then come back to this one. But I want to talk about the three main reasons people get dizzy. Two are peripheral, meaning they happen in your ear, and one is central, meaning it happens in your brain. We're going to talk, start with the most common one, and that is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPPV. BPPV is a peripheral vestibular disorder, so it's happening in your inner ear itself, not in your brain, not in your spinal cord, it's in your ear. So if you think about a picture of your inner ear, you have two parts. You have your cochlea, that's the snail looking thing It's you learned about in high school biology class maybe, and then you didn't think about it at all, but it helps us here. Attached to that is your vestibular system. It is three semicircular canals. They kind of look, if you nix my pinky, they kind of look like this a little bit. There's a horizontal one, there's an anterior one and there's a posterior one. And these three canals detect semicircular, these three semicircular canals detect angular motion. So if you spin in a circle, if you lie back in bed, those are angular type motions and those are detected again by those semicircular canals. If you are thinking more about linear motion, so you're going up and down, side to side, forwards and backwards, down an elevator, down an escalator, something like that. That is your otolith organs that are detecting those. And those are the utricle and the saccule. And those are tiny little crystals that sit on top of a jelly-like substance on top of some hair cells. So if you imagine if you dropped, this is a ridiculous thing to imagine, but imagine jello, like a perfect square of jello on top of grass. Now, Pick that up and sprinkle sesame seeds on top. Okay, so now you've had this thing in your hands. And again, it's grass, jello, sesame seeds. If you tilted it one way or the other, those sesame seeds with gravity would pull one way or pull the other way, depending on where it is in space. And that is how the otoconia work. They are just like your sesame seeds. Super, super, super teeny tiny things on top of this jelly substance that's pulled back and forth with gravity. When you look to the right, the right side of your vestibular system fires more, the left side fires less, and vice versa kind of all day long, right? And if you are looking forward, those crystals, they go forwards or backwards, and they're supposed to be there. They're a really vitally important part of your vestibular system. BPPV, on the other hand, is when those crystals fall off, which they're supposed to, and do not get absorbed by the dark cells. The dark cells, it sounds like something that you would hear about in like Harry Potter or Star Wars or something like that, but they actually live inside your ear. And what they're supposed to do in your inner ear is absorb. So they're supposed to take those ear crystals that fall off because that's a normal part of being human. And they are supposed to absorb them back into your body and then make new ones that then fall on top of the um, utricle and the saccule in those organs on top of that jelly stuff. If you so happen to be in a certain position or you look up right when, let's say you look up right when one is falling off or you are in your sleep and one falls off or something like that happens and it doesn't go in the exact right spot to be reabsorbed, it could end up in a semicircular canal. The most common one that it ends up in is your posterior canal. They're kind of back here. If this was the canal, it's down and back here, kind of. 
and it will fall in there. And that is what benign paroxysmal positional vertigo in. That's all is. That's all. That's all it is. The little ear crystal fall fell into the wrong spot, and now every time you lie down, the fluid in the semicircular canal is moved after you stop moving with inertia and gravity. And so this crystal is kind of like living in this canal, moving back and forth, depending on which one it is, moving back and forth within that canal. And it's saying, oh my gosh, my eyes are going to continue to move after I have laid down. So if you lay down, you'll actually notice that your eyes kind of do without you noticing. That is called nystagmus and that is an involuntary eye movement that nystagmus is really important for all things in general it's supposed to be there um, but when you have bppv that nystagmus continues because the crystal continues to move when you have stopped so that's why it's a little bit delayed and that's why it lasts for 15 to 60 seconds after you lie down so this is the presentation of bppv that i will see as a physical therapist with people telling me their symptoms and that's how I determine what it is. So uh, my patients will say, I lay down in bed and then like a second or two later, my eyes start twitching and I don't know the direction, but the room looks like it's spinning or sliding or somehow moving. And I say, is it always on the same side? Or when you roll over in bed, what is that like? And they'll tell me different things like rolling over in bed, sitting up in bed, looking up into a cabinet, rolling onto one side or the other side, laying down from bed. I think I already said getting up from bed. Those are the main things. Looking under the couch for a dog toy is a big one. Those kinds of things, if those are causing room spinning vertigo, you go like this, you're like, whoa, all of a sudden, that can be BPPV, and that is the time to go to your physical therapist, ask for an Epley maneuver. It is the most common cause, the most, most, most common cause of vertigo in general. So if you think you might have this, it's really good to get evaluated because it is actually pretty easy to treat. It might be positional vertigo that's not BPPV. There's a difference between these things. If when you lie back, it's immediate, like I lie down and immediately it starts spinning and it doesn't go away until I move positions. That's not BPPV usually. Usually that is something neurological and it can be coming from something like vestibular migraine is what I most commonly see it with. So hopefully that makes sense on what BPPV is. Remember, it's a mechanical issue. So it's just an ear crystal, a little bit out of place, and it can be treated pretty easily with a mechanical movement, an Epley maneuver or a barbecue roll or something of that sort, um, usually within one to three visits with a skilled physical therapist. So making sure you're seeing someone who knows what they're talking about is really important. The next thing that I want to talk about, number two of the diagnoses we're talking about today is vestibular neuritis. Now, vestibular neuritis is an infection in your inner ear. So this is still a peripheral vestibular disorder, meaning a vestibular disorder that lives in your ear um, because it infects the nerve. So a little bit of a recap, your vestibular system looks like this and it fires at the exact same rate on either side all day, every day. When I'm looking forward right now, when I look to my right, the right side fires more, the left side fires less and vice versa all day long it kind of does this sort of thing if i have a vestibular neuritis so i have an infection in my inner ear then one side or the other let's say for argument's sake it's on my left side might shut down a hundred percent it could shut down thirty percent it should could shut down fifty percent doesn't really matter um, in this case particularly how much of the percentage is the, the point is when you're looking forward now your right side is firing more than your left side. So again, it should be like this when you're looking forward. Now you look like this. So your brain assumes that you're looking to the right and saying, oh, I'm looking to the right, even though you're looking straight. Your eyes, your brain is saying, well, my neck is saying I'm looking straight, but my, my brain is saying I'm looking to the right because those are the signals I'm getting for my vestibular system. What the heck do I do? And that's when that nystagmus starts. You have involuntary eye movement towards the direction of the stronger ear. So in this argument, it would be towards the right side. I'd be having this nystagmus usually for 36 to 72 hours. You might have a really hard time going to the bathroom, a really hard time getting out of bed. There could be a lot of nausea and vomiting involved, all of these different symptoms. Now, if this diagnosis is caught in the first 72 hours of when it starts, uh, you can absolutely take something like a steroid taper. 
The steroid is going to be determined by your doctor, obviously, but within 72 hours, if you get a steroid taper, oftentimes this function can come back up either to 100% or higher than the original infection would have made it. And that just makes recovery a little bit easier, okay? Now, a lot of times it's random. It just happens. Who knows why? Sometimes you had uh, chicken pox as a baby or you live with shingles in your um, in some part of your body and those kinds of viruses can repop up looking like something else and vestibular neuritis is something that can look like something else. The amazing thing about your brain and the reason not to be afraid of this is that this is, does not mean you are going to be dizzy forever. This just means, hey, my brain needs to do a little bit of neuroplasticity and compensation to understand that this is my new normal. This is my new forwards. And it can use this side to say, well, if I'm looking this way, this happens. When I'm looking this way, this one gets more excited, right? And so it's just going to use this kind of thing to say, okay, if this is my baseline, if this is my 100%, and I look to my right, and this shuts down a little bit more, now I understand that I'm looking to the right. And it's going to take time, and it's going to take vestibular rehab, but people who get rehab from vestibular neuritis do incredibly well. Now, if you go on to develop persistent postural, perceptual dizziness, that's that's a different story. Of course, people still do super well, but that's just another thing to kind of treat. We'll talk about that in another video. Um, but in general, people with vestibular neuritis present like this. I had nausea and vomiting. I couldn't walk. I couldn't see straight. All these symptoms were happening. And then they've slowly sort of gotten better. Like, I'm not spinning so much, but I'm really anxious. I might start spinning again. Um, I didn't feel so good about a day before. Like, I kind of had what felt like a little bit of sickness. It might have felt like a fever for you. It might have felt like a common cold. For some people, like, I didn't feel any of that. I just randomly got up in the middle of the night and this was happening. Totally depends on the person and their different diagnoses um, and the different way they present. I should say no two people ever present the same way. That is vestibular neuritis and it will slowly get better as your brain starts to compensate, which again, the brain is incredible at compensating. Believe in your body's ability to compensate, to understand, hey, this is my new normal and my brain is going to start to understand that. Vestibular neuritis absolutely gets better. Do not live in fear of neuritis. It gets better and it won't happen twice, which is pretty cool. All right, the last thing that I want to talk to you about today is vestibular migraine. Vestibular migraine is the most common cause of central dizziness and vertigo. Most people's diet, uh, testing comes back totally normal. Some people will have some abnormalities on the saccades and other ocular, so eye movement parts of a vis video nystagmography exam. But if you have a totally normal VNG as well, that does not mean you don't have vestibular migraine. Vestibular migraine is on the spectrum of migraine disorders. Migraine disorder is a is an issue that lives in your brain 24 7 365 and after you're diagnosed typically people are going to have to manage this forever but it does not mean you're going to be dizzy forever every single day it means hey you know what i live with this thing and i manage it um and although that's really frustrating it's also manageable and i see literally hundreds if not thousands of people every single day managing this successfully so you can too now, migraine, again, it's a disease that lives in your brain, and usually we understand it as head pain or light sensitivity or sound sensitivity or whatever. In these cases, if you're like, you know what? No, I, that's not me. I don't have head pain. I don't have light sensitivity. I have sound sensitivity and dizziness. That is still migraine. And that's the really cool part about this or the really crazy part about migraine is that it presents differently for every single person on a spectrum. Some people have an attack once a year. Some people have attacks every single day and everything in between that. So that just means that if you have vestibular migraine, you might not look like another person who has vestibular migraine. It does not discriminate on the basis of pretty much anything, with the exception that it is more common in people who are women versus men assigned to birth. So that is something to understand um, as well. Now, the last thing I want to say about vestibular migraine it is a chronic condition. So it's not a vestibular disorder 
in your inner ears. It's a central vestibular disorder, meaning your inner ears are probably fine and they're sending the correct signal, but your brain is not interpreting those signals accurately. And so oftentimes it leads to the development of persistent postural perceptual dizziness as well, which again, we'll do another video on that. But vestibular migraine is incredibly common and needs to be managed from a holistic point of view. BPPV and neuritis, typically you just need a physical therapist who knows how to do vestibular rehab and you'll be good to go a couple days or a couple weeks. Um, vestibular migraine is going to be something that you manage forever with a larger healthcare team. So it would be recommended you have a headache specialist, maybe an ENT, probably an audiologist, a vestibular physical therapist, maybe a dietitian or a nutritionist. There's lots of people who can help you with migraine. Oh, definitely a therapist who specializes in chronic illness, maybe uh, cognitive behavioral therapy or acceptance and commitment therapy, things like that. So it's going to take a whole team of people and sometimes that's not accessible to everyone. Um, so starting with who you can start with, maybe I can just see a headache specialist, maybe I can just see a vestibular therapist who specializes in vestibular migraine like me. Um, maybe I can see just a regular therapist if anxiety is a really big part of what I'm going through. So kind of knowing your boundaries and knowing what you need to do is going to be a really, really important piece of this for you. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about vestibular migraine, vestibular neuritis, or BPPV, remember all of these can happen actually at the same time. If you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer or do a follow-up video. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel to be alerted when new videos come out. Talk to you soon. Bye.